بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے وتھ دا نیکسٹ ٹاپک آف چیپٹر نمبر ٹو وچ از واٹ وچ یو ہیو آلریڈی سین ان دی ہیڈنگ اٹس دی یونٹ امپلس ریسپانس اینڈ وی کمبائن اٹ وتھ کنولوشن ایز ویل اینڈ کنولوشن سو کنولوشن از دی میجر ٹاپک آف دس چیپٹر So, as we have seen, this we are studying the discrete time LTI systems. So, if you have a an input is x of n, you provide it to your LTI system. The output of the system would be y of n. This is something you know generally. Fine. Now, if you have, this is for any general signals. <clears throat> Now, if you have any particular signal, that is, if your x of n, the input to the LTI system is delta of n. That is the impulse signal. Fine? To this LTI system. So the output in this particular case, y of n, we represent it as h of n, which is called the unit impulse response of the system. So this is the impulse response of the system. What is an impulse response? Impulse response is the output of an LTI system if the input is the unit impulse signal. Fine. Now, now if I uh, delay my input, if I delay my input, that is if my x of n is delta of n minus k. If this is provided to the LTI system, so what would be the output? So we know that this is an LTI system, this is a time invariant system, so the delay in input would be reflected in the delay in output, so y of n would be h of n minus k, it would be h of n minus k, fine. Now, now I multiply this by some factor, multiply. So that x of n, the input to the system is let's say x of k into delta of n minus k. So this is your LTI system. So have a look, what would be the y of n? We know this is a linear system. So this means this, uh, this should obey the property of homogeneity. If you're multiplying something to the input, the, out should, the output should be multiplied by that particular thing. So we have multiplied it by an x of k. So the output would be multiplied, that is x of k into h of n minus k. Fine. So have a look, this is what? We are representing some particular value of the function as an impulse. So if I sum this from negative infinity to infinity, so this would give me any general signal n in terms of the impulse response, in terms of the impulse signal, which was the sampling property we've seen in the previous video. Now if I sum, that is my x of n is the summation. K running from negative infinity to positive infinity. X of k delta of n minus k. You provide it to your LTI system. The output of the system would be what? We know that this is an LTI system. This is a linear system. It would, it would do what? It would satisfy the property of additivity. 
So if you're adding something in the input, the output to the individual inputs would be added as well. So which means that now my y of n would be what? It would be the same summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of k h of n minus k and this particular thing this particular thing is known as the convolution sum this is known as convolution sum or it's also known as the superposition sum superposition sum fine so if you have a look over here we have now represented our any given signal x of n in terms of the basic signal impulse signal with the help of the sampling property of the impulse so now we will divide it so we're using the superposition to calculate the output which would be the superposition of the responses to each and every of the input fine so this is your convolution sum mathematically symbolically we represent it as y of n would be x of n convolved with h of n so this is how you represent it symbolically I believe we don't have a minus k. This star sign, this is known as the convolution operator. And let me confirm it in the book. Yes, it's the convolution operator. And we don't have a minus k as well. Now, if you have an LTI system, so an LTI system is completely characterized by its impulse response. If I write it over here, an LTI system is completely characterized by its impulse response, that is H of N. Now, what does this line mean? This line means if you know the the impulse response of the system, you know everything about it. You can find the output of the system if the impulse response is known. And of course, then you would have the current input. What do I mean is that you have the current input, right? So if you, the impulse response is known, you can find out the, 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 the output of the system through the convolution. Fine. So an LTI system is completely characterized by its impulse response. It, a unique LTI system has a unique LTI, a unique impulse response, okay? So, which means that H of N, that is the impulse response, is fixed for every LTI system. That is, each and every LTI system has its own impulse response, okay? Each and every LTI system has its own impulse response it's fixed for a unique LTI system we have a unique impulse response and what's impulse response it's the output of the system of the LTI system when the input to that system is the impulse signal and then using this phenomena of delay multiplied linear and time invariant system we came to know about the convolution so you will come to know that the convolution is the running sum of one signal. You can also define it like this. So write it for yourself. Convolution is the running sum of one signal over the shifted version of another signal. Write it. Convolution is the running sum of one signal over the shifted version of another signal. This is the mathematical definition of convolution, that it is the running sum. In discrete time, we would see that it would be the running integral over one of one signal over the running over the shifted version of another signal. So that's all about today. I believe I've some, taken some time. That's all about today. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. 
where we start discussing examples on convolution. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.